Hello, welcome back to my channel. Working in the beauty industry, you work with a lot of different vendors and if you have a concept or an idea of a product that you want to create, a lot of the times they send you submissions. So I wanted to share with you some products that I think are really interesting and even though I haven't launched it yet or I might not even launch it, I just think just using and showing you some products and unique textures might be really fun to watch. So the first product I'm going to use is a face primer. So this primer is really interesting because um, it has glitter in it. So this is just a sample. The color isn't finished at all, but I wanted to show you how it looks on my skin. And I'm gonna apply it on my face. It actually makes my skin look like it's glowing, which is really nice. The primer dries relatively fast. Now that it's set, I'm going to move on to the next product, which will be foundation. So most of you might know that I haven't been wearing foundation for the past few years. And this is partially why I haven't developed a foundation. Not to say that I'm not interested in looking at any because I do think some foundation formulations could potentially be good concealers. This is what it looks like. And I'm gonna use this sponge. This sponge looks like a butt plug. I don't know why they sent this to me, but I do love this shape because it looks like shit. I haven't tried it myself, so let's see. So now that my shit sponge is damp, I'm gonna load up the foundation on the sponge. Because it's been so long since I've worn foundation, whenever I do have to wear it for a shoot, um, it feels so heavy. It literally feels like I have a mask on. But this foundation feels really light. I actually quite like it. If I honestly had to launch a foundation, I would actually look into this one more. Okay, so now that I have my foundation on, the next step is going to be concealer. The reason why I haven't launched a liquid concealer is because there's already so much on the market and I just don't want to add more noise to the space. I remember years ago, liquid concealers were still relatively thick and heavy. It's evolved a lot over the years, and there's a lot of different formulations you can find now on the market, so it really covered my dark circles. Okay, so now that my concealer is done, the next step is going to be... Hmm, what should I do? Actually, let's do brows. There's just been some really interesting submissions that I've gotten over the years for brows. I've just been looking for the right brow pen. Haven't found it yet, but I just thought this was a very unique product. So it's probably out on the market, but this was just something that came across me years ago that I want to show you. Okay, I'm gonna go in. Not exactly what I was expecting, but this is why it's a submission. You kind of get an idea of what the vendor is creating, what the chemists are making. And from there, you kind of tweak it. Doing markers and pens are really hard because it takes a very specific tooling. It's not as easy as making powder products because there's so many different components in a pen. Okay, I really tried, but this is the best I can do with this pen. Quick little bathroom break. I also changed my earrings. How cute are these? These are M earrings. They were made by my friend James. Thank you, I love you. So I'm gonna move on with blush. Normally for me, blush has always been an afterthought. I've never really been a blush person until recently. I've noticed that adding a hint of blush really just changes the whole tone and mood of your face. And it can also add a lot of life and color to your skin. And I've been really interested in developing a skincare makeup hybrid, hence the birth of Serum Blush. So there's been a lot of iterations since the first prototype of Serum Blush, which I'm gonna show you. So this is the first prototype of Serum Blush. You can see the consistency is really goopy, feels almost like a gel. And I'm gonna apply it on this cheek so you can see. The consistency is really light, but it didn't have that skincare quality I was looking for. And I also noticed right after I removed it, it stained my cheek. So that was a big no-no for me. So we did a lot of back and forth with the vendor. They sent us version two, version three, which I'm gonna show you here. So here are the different samples that we received. And again, it wasn't perfect, but it was getting there. Each iteration they did, we were getting closer and closer. After the fourth, fifth, and sixth iteration, we finally landed on the winning formula, which is right here. So we went from this to this. And I'm gonna show you Serum Blush on this cheek. 
You really just need one drop, but just so I can show you on camera, this was the winning formula for us because it just feels so beautiful and silky on the skin and it gives you a really nice glow. It just makes your skin look very healthy. You can see the difference between the first version and the final version. Now that my blush is done, I'm gonna move on to eyes. Let's talk about eyeshadows. I get so many submissions of different types of eyeshadows, metallics, powders, creams, gels, every texture you can think of. So what makes this formula so unique is that it's not a powder, it's not a gel. It feels more like a whipped mousse. It's extremely pigmented. It's like you're painting on your eyelids. Look how gold this is too. Eyeliner is definitely a desert island essential for me. You could do so much with eyeliner and eyeliner can be your best friend or your greatest enemy, depending on the type of eyeliner you get. So this eyeliner is a liquid dip eyeliner and it's waterproof, but it wasn't something that wowed me, which is why I passed on this sample. You can see as I'm applying this on, it's very wet. It's not the most forgiving. My rule of thumb normally is if it's really hard for me to use, the barrier of entry is gonna be even harder for an average consumer. It's just not an eyeliner I would reach for every day. And that's another rule of thumb of mine is if it's not a product that I'm reaching for every day, I'd rather just pass on it. And I've also noticed with this product, I have to go back and re-dip it over and over again, which I think is really wasteful too. So this, this is honestly the best I can do with this eyeliner. The next submission that I thought was very interesting is this rounded tip lip applicator. It looks like something out of Dr. Seuss. I'm gonna swatch it for you so you can see. It's kind of like a marker. Color could use some work, but um, I haven't actually tried it myself, so this is the first time I'm trying it on. It's definitely a lip tint. Mm. So the product stains the lips. It's still drying, I can feel it. I'm normally not a fan of tints anyway, so this is not a product that I would reach for, but um, it was fun to apply. So I've been on a hunt for my holy grail clear lip gloss ever since I could remember, probably like early 2000s when I started to experiment more with makeup. Most clear glosses that are out on the market that offer high shine are normally really sticky, really goopy, not a fan of those. So I received a submission that I thought had a lot of potential, but it wasn't there quite yet. At first, I wasn't a fan of this lip gloss just because it had a lot of glitter in it, and I'm not a big fan of glittered glosses. I like glitter, but in doses. I saw a lot of potential in this formula. So the next submission, we received it in a brush form. Without the glitter, it was a thousand times better for me. But it wasn't quite there yet because I wanted more shine and I wanted it to feel more silky and cushiony. So after going back and forth, we finally landed on a formula we were all happy about. But we weren't done yet because the next step, we had to choose the right applicator. It's sort of like dating. You need to have a good formula first and then pair it with the right applicator. We received so many different types of doe foot applicators, brushes, but we landed on a paddle brush that we really loved and we thought gave the lip gloss this cushiony, beautiful sensorial feeling. See, we weren't done yet though. We still had to figure out how the component would look. So we received a lot of interesting submissions and we just went back and forth. We got a component we were happy with. The final component looks like this. It's frosted and it has a matte touch and it feels really nice to hold. So I actually forgot to apply mascara on. So I'm gonna curl my lashes and get them ready for mascara. I'm gonna go in and apply. It's a plastic applicator. It deposits a lot of product on my lashes. I normally don't like plastic applicators, but then again, it really depends on the formulations. Do you guys prefer plastic applicators, nylon? Everyone has their preferences. Okay, so mascara is done. So this is a loose powder that is finely milled. Just gonna tap it. My T-zone, it smells really nice though. Mmm, it smells like roses. I normally don't like fragrances, but this smells really nice. Powder done. So the final step is setting spray. So I have in my hands a lot of different setting sprays and I'm going to spray off camera just so that you can see the different shapes of these sprays. 
So this is the first setting spray. Whoa, I opened my eyes too soon because it's stinging. I love this setting spray. Voila guys, this is the finished look. Do you like it? Do you hate it? What do you think? On camera it looks pretty decent, but in real life it's not as forgiving. Well, first off, a lot of these products are samples, so the colors are not even finished. And this is why a lot of the colors don't really go with my complexion. The brow product is really red. Um, the gold is not necessarily a color I would go for, but the formulation is really unique and interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun showing you the process of how certain products are made and what the thought process is behind creating these different products. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go wash my face. Peace. Bye.